coverage of Princess Anne's visit to London, the first stop on her much-publicized goodwill tour of European capital. She gets a royal welcome from the British as thousands cheer the gracious young member of one of Europe's oldest ruling families. After three days of continuous activity and a visit to Buckingham Palace, Anne flew to Amsterdam, where Her Royal Highness dedicated the new International Aid Building and christened an ocean liner. Then went to Paris, where she attended many official functions designed to cement trade relations between her country and the Western European nations. And so to Rome, the Eternal City, where the princess visit was marked by a spectacular military parade highlighted by the band of the crack Bersaglieri Regiment. The smiling young princess showed no sign of the strain of the week's continuous public appearances. And at her country's embassy that evening, a formal reception and ball in her honor was given by her country's ambassador to Italy. Sua Altezza Reale, Her Royal Highness. Excellency, the Papal Nuncio, Monsignor Altomonte. Eccellenza, piacere di conoscerla. Grazie della bontà di vostra altezza reale, grazie. Sir Hugo Marse de Farmington. Good evening, Sir Hugo. Good evening, Your Royal Highness. His Highness, the Maharaja of Khanipur and the Rajkumari. I'm so glad that you could come. Thank you, Thank you madam. Free Herr Erika Messingferner Berienschön. Guten Abend. Prinz Istvan Barloschi Nordjvarod. How do you do? Ihre Hoheit, der Fürst und die Fürstin von und zu Lichtenstichenholz. Guten Abend. Freut mich sehr. 
Sahari Singh and Karak Singh. So happy. The Count and Countess von Maastrand. Good evening, Countess. Good evening. Signore, Signora Jean de Camonche. Good evening. Hassan Eldin Pasha. How do you do? Voglio, voglio assolutamente morire sulla nave, sì, perché, perché... my nightgowns, and I hate all my underwear, too. My dear, you have lovely things. But I'm not 200 years old. Why can't I sleep in pajamas? Pajamas? Just the top half. Did you know there are people who sleep with absolutely nothing on at all? I rejoice to say that I did not. Listen. Oh, and your slip. Please put on your slippers and come away from the window. Your milk and crackers. Everything we do is so wholesome. They'll help you to sleep. I'm too tired to sleep. I can't sleep a wink. Now, my dear, if you don't mind, tomorrow's schedule, or schedule, whichever you prefer, both are correct. 8.30, breakfast here with the embassy staff. 9 o'clock, we leave for the Polinari Automotive Works, where you'll be presented with a small car. Thank you. Which you will not accept. No, thank you. 10.35, inspection of food and agriculture organization, will present you with an olive tree. No, thank you. Which you will accept. Thank you. 10.55, the new foundling home for orphans. You will preside over the laying of the cornerstone, same speech as last Monday. Trade relations. Yes. For the orphans? Oh, no, no, the other one. Youth and progress. Precisely. 11.45, back here to rest. No, that's wrong. 11.45, conference here with the press. Sweetness and decency. One o'clock sharp, lunch with the foreign ministry. You will wear your white lace and carry a bouquet of a very small, small pink, pink roses. roses. 3.05, presentation of a plaque. Thank you. 4.10, review special guard of carabinieri police. No, thank you. 4.45, you back do? here to change Shams. your uniform so to meet the international... No! Good no! Day. no! It's all right, dear. It didn't spill. I don't give it spilled up nuts. I don't give I drowned in it. My dear, you're <laughs> ill. I'll send for Dr. Bonacoba. I don't want Dr. Bonacoba. 
Please let me die in peace. You're not dying. Leave me. Leave me. It's nerves. Control yourself, Anne. I don't want to. Your Highness. <clears throat> I'll get Dr. Bonaco. It's no use. I'll be dead before he gets here. <clears throat> She was asleep. She was in hysterics three minutes ago, Doctor. Are you asleep, man? No. Oh. I'll only disturb your Royal Highness in a moment, huh? I'm very ashamed, Dr. Bonacova. I suddenly I was crying. <laughs> to cry? A perfectly normal thing to do. It's most important she be calm and relax for the press conference, Doctor. Don't worry, Doctor. I'll be calm and relaxed. I'll, I'll bow and I'll smile. And I'll improve trade relations and I, and I will. There she goes again. No, no, Give no. her something, Doctor, please. No. Uncover her arm, please. <laughs> What's that? Sleep and calm. This will relax you and make your highness feel a little happy. It's a new drug, quite harmless. There. I don't feel any different. You will. It may take a little time to take hold. Just now, lie back, huh? Can I keep just one light on? Of course. Best thing I know is to do exactly what you wish for a while. Thank you, Doctor. Oh, the General, Doctor, quick. Oh. I'm perfectly all right. Good night, ma'am. Good night, ma'am. Good night, doctor.
Bet 500. 500. How many? One. I'll take one. Three. Foolish boy. Two for Papa. 500 more. Without looking. 500 and uh, <clears throat> raise your thousand. Two pairs. Oh, well, I got three shy little sevens. Uh, a nervous straight. Come home, you fool. Hey, look at that. So Six thousand five hundred. Hey, I'm not bad. That's ten bucks. Uh, one more round, and I'm gonna throw you gents right out in the snow. Say what? Oh, hey, 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 hey. I gotta get up early. Date with Her Royal Highness, who will graciously pose for some pictures. What do you mean early? My personal invitation says eleven forty-five. Couldn't be anything to do with the fact that you were ahead. It could. Well, it works out fine for me. This is my last 5,000. And you hyenas are not going to get it. Thanks a lot, Irving. Yeah, see you at Annie's little party in the morning. Ciao, Joe. Yeah, ciao. Good night, Joe. Stay so All right, All right little seven-card stud. Okay, All with me. sit down. I think you better sit up. Much too young to get picked up by the police. Police? Yep, police. 2.15 and back here to change. 2.45. You know, people who can't handle liquor shouldn't drink it. If I were dead and buried and I heard your voice beneath the sod, my heart of dust would still rejoice. Do you know that poem? Huh. What do you know? You're well read. Well dressed. You're snoozing away in a public street. Do you care to make a statement? What the world needs is a return to sweetness and decency in the souls of its young men. And... Oh. Yeah, I uh, couldn't agree with him more, but, uh... Get yourself some coffee. You'll be all right. You take the cab. Mm. Come on. Climb in the cab and go home. So happy. You got any money? Never carry money. That's a bad habit. Mm. All right. I'll drop you off. Come on. It's a taxi. Well, it's not the super chief. Dove andiamo? Where are we going? Where do you live? Coliseum. Oh, come on, you're not that drunk. <laughs> you're so smart, I'm not drunk at all. I'm just being very happy. Hey, now don't go to sleep again. Come on. Per favore, signor Addetto, dove andiamo? Where are we going? Well, 
Dito in un momento dove fermare. Okay. Look, now, where do you want to go? Hmm? Where shall I take you? Where do you, where do you, where do you live? Huh? Come on. Come on. Where do you live? Come on, where do you live? Coliseum. She lives in the Coliseum. It's wrong, address. Now, look, signore, for me it is very late tonight. Um, mia moglie, um, wife, uh, I have three bambino, three bambino. Uh, you know bambino? Uh, the, um, uh, my, my taxi go home, I, I go home uh, to, uh, to, together. Signore, excuse uh, me. Via get, Marguta get, 51. Uh, via Marguta 51. Oh, molto bene. Yes, via Marguta 51, 51. I am very happy. Thousand lire, mila lire. Mila. Cinque mila. One, two, three, four mila. Okay. Mila per te. For me? Si. Oh, grazie mille. Okay, okay. Now look, take a little bit of that. Uh, take her wherever she wants to go. Uh, hmm? uh, Capito? Uh, uh, Capito. Uh, uh, buona notte. Good night. Buona notte. Oh, no, no, moment, moment, moment. Yeah. No, no, no. All right, all right. No, no. Look, as soon as she wakes up, yeah. see? She tell you where she wants to go. Okay. M moment, moment. My taxi, no for sleep. My taxi, no sleep. You understand? You understand? Look, look pal. <laughs> yes. This is not my problem, see? <laughs> I never see her before. Huh? Okay. <laughs> it's not your problem, it's not my problem. What you want? You don't want girl, yeah? Me don't want girl. Police. Maybe she want girl. Stay calm, stay calm. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Love me, baby. Love me. elevator. It's my room. I'm terribly sorry to mention it, but the dizziness is getting worse. Can I sleep here? Well, that's the general idea. Can I have a silk nightgown with rosebuds on it? I'm afraid you'll have to rough it tonight. In these. Good job. Sorry, honey, but I haven't worn a nightgown in years. Will you help me get undressed, please? Uh, okay. May I have some? No. Now look. 
is very unusual. I've never been alone with a man before, even with my dress on. With my dress off, it's most unusual. <laughs> I don't seem to mind. Do you? I think I'll go out for a cup of coffee. Mm. You'd better get to sleep. Mm. No, no, no. On this one. Terribly nice. Hey, hey. These are pajamas. They're to sleep in. You're to climb into them. You understand? Thank you. Then you do your sleeping on the couch, see? Not on the bed. Not on the chair. On the couch. Is that clear? Do you know my favorite poem? Uh, you already recited that for me. Arethusa rose from a couch of snows in the Acroceronian mountains. Keats. Shelley. Keats. You just keep your mind off the poetry and on the pajamas. Everything will be all right, see? It's Keats. I'll be, it's Shelley. I'll be back in about ten minutes. Keats. You have my permission to withdraw. Thank you very much. Well, no trace, Your Excellency. Have you searched the grounds? Every inch, sir, from the attics to the cellar. I must put you on your honor not to speak of this to anyone. I must remind you that the princess is the direct heir to the throne. This must be classified as top crisis secret. Have I your pledge? Yes, sir. Very well. Now we must notify their majesties. So happy. The pleasure's mine. The prince's interview. Eleven
Hello, Joe. Good morning, Joe. Hello, honey. Mr. Hennessy has been looking for you. Uh-oh. Thanks a lot, hon. Come in. You've been looking for me? Just coming to work. Who, me? We start our days at 8.30 in this office. We pick up our assignments. I picked mine up last night. What assignment was that? The Princess, 11.45. You've already been to the interview? Oh, sure, I just got back. Well, well, well. All my apologies. It's all right. Uh, this is very interesting. No, I'm just routine. Tell me, tell me, did she answer all the questions on the list? Well, of course she did. I've got them right here somewhere. Uh, don't disturb yourself. I have a copy here. How did Her Highness react to the idea of a European Federation? She thought it was just fine. She did? Well, she thought that there'd be two effects. Two. The uh, direct and the indirect. Oh, remarkable. Naturally, she felt that the indirect would not be as direct as the direct. That is not right away. No, 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 no. no. Later on, of course, well, <laughs> nobody knows. Well, well, well. That was a shrewd observation. They fool you, you know, these royal kids. They've got a lot more on the ball than we suspect. How did she feel about the future friendship of nations? Youth. Yeah. She felt that uh, the youth of the world must lead the way to a better world. Mm -hmm. Original. Uh, by the way, what was she wearing? Oh, you mean what did she have on? Well, that's usually what it means. Uh, what's the matter? Is it a little warm in here for you? No, no. I just hurried over here. Oh, that's naturally, all. with the story of these dimensions. Did you say she was wearing gray? No, I didn't say that. Well, she usually wears gray. Oh, well, uh, it was a kind of a gray. Oh, I think I know the dress you mean. It has a gold collar. That's the one. That's, that's the one. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know exactly how to describe it, but that's it. I think you described it very well. In view of the fact that our highness was taken violently ill at three o'clock this morning, put to bed with a high fever, and has had all her appointments for today cancelled in toto. In toto? Yes, Mr. Bradley, in toto. Certainly pretty hard to swallow. In view of the fact that you just left her, of course. But here it is, Mr. Bradley. All over the front page of every newspaper in Rome. All right, all right. I overslept. It can happen to anybody. If you ever got up early enough to read a morning paper, you might discover little news events, little items of general interest that might prevent you in the future from getting immersed in such a gold-plated, triple-deck, star-spangled lie as you have just told me. If I were you, I would try some other line of business, like mattress testing. Is this the princess? Yes, Mr. Bradley, that is the princess. It isn't Annie Oakley, Dorothy Lamour, or Madame Chung Kai-shek. Take a good look at her. You might be interviewing her again someday. Am I fired? No, you're not fired. When I want to fire you, you won't have to ask. You know you're fired. The man's mad. Chief, it's Joe Bradley. Now, listen carefully. I want you to hurry up to my place and see if there's somebody there asleep. Ah, see, Mr. Joe. I look subito. You wait. Aspetta. Mr. 
Mr. Joe? Here. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me, tell me. Bellissima. Giovanni, I love you. Now listen. Yes, Mr. Joe. A gun? No. Yes, a gun, a knife, anything. But nobody goes in and nobody goes out. Pepito? Okay. You still here? How much would a real interview with this dame be worth? Are you referring to Her Highness? I'm not referring to Annie Oakley, Dora de la Mora, Madam. How much? What do you care? You got about as much chance of getting. I know, but if I did, how much would it be worth? Oh, oh. just a plain talk on world conditions might be worth two hundred and fifty. A views on clothes, of course, would be worth a lot more. Maybe a thousand dollars. Dollars. I'm talking about her views on everything. Huh? The private and secret longings of a princess. Her innermost thoughts, as revealed to your own correspondent in a private, personal, exclusive interview. Can't use it, huh? I didn't think you'd like it. Come here. Love angle, too, I suppose. Practically all love angle. With pictures. Could be. How much? That particular story would be worth five grand to any new service. But uh, tell me, Mr. Bradley, if you are sober, just how you are going to obtain this fantastic interview? I plan to enter her sick room disguised as a thermometer. You said five grand? I want you to shake on that. Uh, you realize, of course, Her Highness is in bed today and he's for Athens tomorrow. Yep. Uh, now, I'd like to make a little side bet with you. 500 says you don't come up with the story. What are you looking at that for? I just want to see what time it is. Huh? Uh, what day it is. Uh... It's a deal. Now, I'd like you to shake. <laughs> Let's see, you're into me for about 500 now. When you lose this bet, you'll owe me 1,000. <laughs> Why, you poor sucker, I'll practically own you. <laughs> you have practically owned me for a couple of years now, but that's all over. I'm going to win that money, and with it, I'm going to buy me a one-way ticket back to New York. Go on, go on. I love to hear you whine. And when I'm back in a real newsroom, I'll enjoy thinking about you sitting here with an empty leash in your hands and nobody to twitch for you. So long. Nobody is go. Absolutely no. Well, thanks a lot. Oh, uh, Giovanni, uh, how would you like to make some money? Money? Yeah. My God. That's the stuff. Now, look, I've got a sure thing. Double your money back in two days. Double my money? Yeah, well, I need a little investment capital to swing the deal. Now, if you'll just lend me a little cash, uh, Ma sei un scemo? You owing me two months rent? And you want me to lend you money? No. Certamente no. Tomorrow you'll be sorry.
Empress? Your Royal Highness? Yes, what is it? 